You may have heard of one of the benefits of mass timber construction being reduction in foundation sizes and foundation requirements. In today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at that topic. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Two Minute Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look through the requirements for foundations in mass timber structures. Specifically, we're gonna drill down on this question of can foundations in mass timber structures be smaller? Of course, that begs the question, be smaller than what? So that is one of the key things we're gonna take a look at is comparing a mass timber structure to other structures. Now we're gonna walk through this in three steps. We're gonna look first at comparing the overall weight or mass of a mass timber building to what that building on that specific site would have been otherwise. The second thing we're gonna take a look at is the lateral systems in a mass timber building and how they have a significant impact on the foundation requirements. And the third thing we're gonna take a look at is the site specific soil conditions that also play a big role in the foundation requirements in a mass timber building. Now I think it's important to start out this conversation by recognizing that absolutely yes, using mass timber does have the potential to result in smaller foundation requirements. Specifically due to the lower mass or the lower weight of the mass timber structure, that can result in lower forces on the foundations and therefore lower foundation sizes. But first taking a look at this idea of comparing the mass or weight of a mass timber structure to a structure with other building materials, it's important to understand what that building would have been if it weren't mass timber. For example, if we're looking at comparing it to a cast in place concrete building, generally mass timber is gonna have significant reduction in overall mass. Take for example, a six inch thick concrete slab. We're talking about a mass just of that slab of about 75 pounds per square foot. Similar thickness of mass timber floor slab is gonna come in 15 to 20 pounds per square foot. So a significant reduction in mass, but it is important to point out that in a mass timber building, we are often adding a poured layer of concrete or gypsum based poured topping layer on top of the mass timber floor panel. That is generally gonna add anywhere from one to three inches of thickness to the floor assembly and also adding anywhere from 15 to 40 pounds per square foot to the floor assembly. All right, the second thing we're gonna take a look at is the lateral systems and how lateral systems have a direct impact on the foundation requirements, specifically in a mass timber structure. Now, two of the key factors that play into determination of seismic forces and lateral system forces are the overall mass of the building, the weight of the building, as well as what's called the seismic response coefficient. This is a value obtained from a document called ASCE7. Now, in general, the higher the mass of the building, the higher the resulting seismic forces would be. On the opposite side of things, the higher the seismic response coefficient, the lower the seismic forces will be. So if you're able to have a building that has a very low mass and very high seismic response coefficient, that's really about the best you can do in terms of reducing your overall seismic forces. Now, how does mass timber play all into all of this? Well, we do know, as we said earlier, that mass timber as a building system does generally have a lower mass or a lower weight than other building materials or building systems. Therefore, it does have the potential to reduce seismic forces. On the other hand, if we're using something like a mass timber shear wall system, as you can see here in this image, usually what we're looking at is an applied force at the top of the mass timber shear wall, which is coming in from the diaphragm. That is creating this overturning resulting force that you're seeing, which is causing an uplift or a tension at one end of the mass timber shear wall and a compression or a downward force at the other end of the mass timber shear wall. Now, one thing we can look at here is the, on the uplift side of things, the mass or the weight of that wall or loads tributary to that wall can actually counteract this uplift force. So what that's doing is actually reducing the foundation requirements that are there to help counteract this overturning force. Now, oftentimes we don't have enough mass in that dead weight of the structure of the wall to resist the overturning force. So we do still need to size the foundation in such a way that it can resist these overturning forces. Um, it's not just the mass of the foundation, it's also any soil that can be engaged by that foundation system to counteract that overturning force. All right, and then the third thing that is going to impact the foundation requirements, foundation sizes in a mass timber structure are the existing soil conditions. Now, this is something that is specific to each individual project and site, so it's hard to make across the board 
broad stroke discussions about these impacts on foundation requirements for mass timber structures. Specifically, what we're talking about here are the existing soil conditions and their capabilities of resisting compression loads. This is often referred to as the allowable soil bearing pressure. It's usually stated in a pounds per square foot, you know, something like say a thousand pounds per square foot, 5,000 pounds per square foot. Now, generally, we're going to see a bigger benefit of a lightweight structural system when we're on the low end of the spectrum in terms of an existing conditions with low allowable soil bearing pressures. If the weight of the structure is lower, therefore, we don't need as large of an area of foundation to spread out that load over the existing soils if their capacity to resist loads is low. And we can see some benefit by using a low weight structure such as mass timber on a site that has poor soil conditions. If you're at the other end of the spectrum where the site has good or high uh, allowable bearing capacity for the soil, you aren't going to see as much benefit. The reason I say that is because oftentimes once you start getting up into high soil bearing pressure capabilities, oftentimes what you'll see start to control the foundation sizes isn't so much what area is required to resist the loads, but it might actually just be minimum foundation element sizes that could be dictated by code or dictated by in-house office best practices. Now, one other potential benefit of using mass timber in terms of the existing soil conditions are sites in which we're not just going to settle for what those conditions are. We're actually going to do some soil remediation work. Now, this could be installing rammed aggregate piers. It could be installing piles, something else to either fully take the foundation loads or reinforce the existing soil that is there. Now, of course, using a lower weight structure such as a mass timber system can have the benefit of either reducing the requirements, you know, the number or the depth of the installation of these piers or piles. And of course, that is going to result in some cost and schedule savings. So even on sites that were doing soil remediation, using mass timber could result in less requirements for soil remediation or potentially no soil remediation requirements. And we've seen this play out on projects such as the Forte Tower in Australia. They had a site that was very poor existing soil conditions, and they did a study and found that they would be able to do a four-story tall concrete building, but this structure actually went forward as a 10-story tall CLT structure because of the lighter weight of a mass timber system. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it beneficial. As always, we'll see you back here next week.